A very warm welcome to you. Many thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Almond Finance and Wealth Report, your number one source for all the latest happenings in the insurance industry. I am Margaret Mary Osiobo. On this edition, we begin by joining Faith and her guests on the town hall as they discuss a speedy claim settlement as an advertising tool for the insurance industry. Delayed claim settlements have always been the bone of contention between the insured and their insurance company. But then why are claim settlements delayed in the first place? These and more form the basis for the no holds barred discussion on the town hall. So do take a listen. By the time you tell the claimant that okay, you have to produce the police report and this and that, it gets to the police, it gets frustrated somehow. Then it takes its anger back to the insurance industry. But why is it a law? Same thing goes with other classes of insurance. On this edition also, recently, friends and well-wishers gathered at the Intercontinental Hotel for the investiture of Mrs. Fumi Babington Ashaye as the 48th President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria. The colorful event was graced by many dignitaries from all walks of life. And just as always, we'll bring you our Industry Icon segment. So all these and more are what we have lined up for your pleasure this week. Do stay tuned, sit back, relax and enjoy it. Having insurance is like having an army or a police force. Having these shows you are ready for your enemies should they decide to attack. The enemies may never attack, but you must always have your defenses ready and prepared. A very warm welcome to you. It's a pleasure as always to have you join us on the Insurance Industry Town Hall, where we discuss topical issues in a no holds barred manner. Today we'll be looking at the topic, Speedy Claim Settlement as Advertising Tool in the Insurance Industry Beyond Rhetorics. In our usual manner, we've gathered an array of eminent personalities that can do justice to our topic of discourse. In no particular order, I'd like to invite to join me on set Mr. Kayode Oshunuga, who is an accomplished insurance professional with over 30 years experience in the industry. He started his career with Guinea Insurance PLC. He was in charge of claims at both ICO and Equity Indemnity Insurance, now Equity Assurance PLC. He's presently a claims consultant and a practicing loss adjuster. Thank you so very much, sir, for joining me on the program. Thank you for having me. I'd also like to invite to join me on site Mr. Ido Wahid Williams, who was formerly the head of business development in AROM Life until 2016. He's presently in management consultancy and training in his company, Dollar Miss Nigeria Limited. He's an associate of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank for joining. you. And uh, last but not least, he's the Igwe himself, <laughs> even though he didn't tell me. I'd like to invite you to join me on set, Mr. Pasqua Egere, who is a fellow of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria. He's also a fellow of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. He's a renowned author who has penned many books on insurance in, in the Nigerian insurance industry. He's been practicing insurance for over 25 years. He was the immediate past managing director of AfriBank Insurance Brokers, now renamed Main Street Insurance Brokers. Thank you so very much, Mr. Aguirre, for joining me on the program. Thank you. Okay, once again, gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. Um, um, somebody once mentioned to me that um, this insurance that you, you propagate all the time, you know insurance is a very weird business. I said, why? He said, it's the only business I know that sells a promise, that you don't get the value of insurance, the insurance policy, whatever policy you have, until you suffer a loss or a damage. Now, why is it that 
insurance underwriters in, in Nigeria. Do not place premium on, on claims settlement, given the fact that it's a promise that you sell and the policyholder doesn't really get the benefit or the value of what he or she has purchased until the software loss. I'd like to start with, uh, well, I'll come back to you. <laughs> I'd like to start with Mr. William. Okay. Um, insurance practice in Nigeria, just like it is in other nations of this world, we actually pledge to um, compensate the insured when they suffer um, loss or damage. And um, you don't really know the value of what you are about, not until when claims occur. Because insurance is an invisible product. And being an invisible product, at the instance when you are possessing insurance, you don't see any feasible product you are working away with, except the document that you have obtained from the insurance company. And the insurance company have made a pledge that upon the payment of the premium for cover possessed, that you will be indemnified at any point in time you suffer loss or damage to your insured property. And when that happens, once the insurer is notified that a claims have occurred, they will verify from their record and if it is established that truly there is a valid cover, the insured is rest assured that he will get his claim and is going to get it set to speedily. Okay, Mr. Williams, you've used two operational words there, verified and genuine. Now, somebody has said, Mr. Egeret, that except if you purchase insurance through an insurance agent or an insurance broker, when you suffer a loss, it's almost impossible for you to get the claim settled as at when, when due. Why is it so? Well, uh, that's not... Um very correct, but uh, um, what is correct there is that um, you will get better services, better interpretation of the policy clauses and all that, and uh, better negotiation with insurance companies if you go through the professionals, which, uh, uh, like the brokers and, uh, of course, uh, the agents. Um, apart from that, um, ordinarily, you, ha you have a contract with the insurance company, a statutory protected contract for that matter. So whether you go through the broker or not, the insurance company is obliged to settle your claim subject to uh, issues that are thrown up at, at loss adjustment uh, period. Of course, it has to be subject to something because you can't walk in and walk out with okay. claim. You know, the insurance company has to go through the whole uh, your story. And uh, once uh, what, uh, whatever is there is correct, I mean, just to use the layman's language, they, of course, they will have to settle you. They have no choice but to settle you. Okay, Mr. <laughs> I said I was going to come to you. You guys are referred to loss adjuster. Ah, those ones, they are CIE. <laughs> they are the one investigating and checking and checking that most times it's even loss adjusters that causes unnecessary delay in claims settlement. Is that correct? Well, that's, that is very far from the truth. Uh, just like the first uh, word you said, that uh, uh, insurance companies do not honor claims at the time, I mean, do not honor their contract at the time of claim. That, that is not very true. What we have found that uh, as a claims administrator, now a claim consultant, also a loss adjuster, uh, we say that uh, what the problem, the challenges has always been that uh, most of the insuring public think uh, equate the operation of insurance to the bank. You put your money in the bank, you walk in, you collect your money. So when you insure, you have a claim, they just expected that, okay, you just walk in immediately and collect your claim without any uh, documentation. World all over, there is a process of uh, uh, verification of claims, right? It only differs from place to place, from company to company. And from my experience in the market, in this, our Nigerian market, it has gone so, so, it has gone so dynamic 
that I see companies, insurance companies, running over themselves to settle claims as at and when due. And that's why they put intermediaries like loss adjusters or their consultants on their toes to ensure that in the olden days, that was when you see uh, loss adjusters or consultants will take a claim and go and sleep over it. No, nobody, nobody does that this, these days, right? It is even the, even, it is even this intermediaries, the loss adjusters and the consultants, that are, is, most of the time will be pursuing the claimants that let us have this, let us have this, let us have this, so that we can process your claim, you can move further. So it's only, I, I've seen millions of Naira claims settled within 30 days in this, in this our market. Okay, now Mr. Shinigua, let me come back to you. It's, what you've said is what we hear all the time, like those of us who cover the in, in insurance bit. But it's still a hard sell um, amongst many of the insuring public. They just believe that when you have a, you suffer a loss, it's almost like the proverbial head of the camera passing through the eyes of the needle for you to get that claim settled. So is it just a perception or is it the reality of what is happening? It's, it's, it's just, it's, uh, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's a wrong perception of it. Now, I tell you, when you have, uh, you have experiences, even in the, in the other industries, you have one slip here or there, right? You go to your bank, you have one uh, failure of service, a, min a minus failure of service. You wish, you want to escalate it, especially in this era of uh, social media, right? People escalate it and people take it as though it is the normal, right? Whereas there are so many other good services that have gone by without being said to the market, right? And even this, this uh, service failure which you're talking about may not be a service failure as, 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 that, as that, because in the, in the perception of the person making the claim, you may see it as, some, as, uh, as a ploy not to, not to pay, pay the claim. <laughs> but if, if you have a motor claim, for instance, and there's an injury involved, or there's, yes, there's injury involved, it be also on you to present a police report to say, okay, this is a police report because there has been a bodily injury or death involved, right? But by the time you tell the claimant that, okay, you have to produce the police report and this and that, it gets to the police, it gets frustrated somehow, then it takes its anger back to the insurance industry. But whereas it's a law, same thing goes with other classes of insurance. Minimum, and I know that insurance in companies in Nigerian market today have so watered down their requirements. They've watered it down so much that you can easily make your claim with minimum doc documentation. Okay, now whether you are a direct Let's customer or you come through a registered insurance, insurance broker. broker. Okay, Mr. Williams, um, oftentimes you find that is at the point. What you said, this issue of documentation, I don't understand, but oftentimes you find out that it's at the point of claim that the insured, who probably didn't go through an intermediary, is coming in contact to say, oh, you need police reports, you need this documentation, you need this. So, and it's always a put off for a lot of people. Why didn't you tell me, I've been issued before the start of this contract that if something happened, I need to get all this documentation and <laughs> you are not asking me to get now that I need the money. Okay, if you, if I may borrow f from uh, Mr. Pascal Egeru's uh, st statement earlier made, that insurance is a contract. And at the point when insurance is possessed, the underwriter prepares a document, which is a policy document, is the evidence of the contract between the parties. And every conditions and every terms and condition that binded on both parties are clearly well spelled out in the document. So it is the responsibility of the insured to take time to peruse the document and find out. In fact, the lawyer also make a provision that within seven days, you are expected to go through the document. If the document is, I mean, if the insurance arrange for 
I mean, for the insured, is not in line with, or, I mean, with what is expected. He has the right to go back to the underwriter to refine tune the arrangement to conform with what exactly he wants. That period is, of that seven days is referred to as the cool off period. And when it comes to the time, if after the insured have possessed the cover and he could still not go back to the underwriter to explain whatever any issues is having after reading through the policy document. He has the, I mean, the underwriter will consider that the insured have accepted the, the cover, the contract. And once that contract is considered accepted and sealed, at the time of claim settlement, it is required of the insured to provide the necessary documentation. You know quite very well that we said that the contract of insurance is an infeasible contract. The only thing that the insurance company will have to verify pertains to the property insured will have to be identified through a document. Welcome back. Thanks for still staying with us. Moving on now, we're bringing highlights of the investiture ceremony of Mrs. Fumi Babington Ashaye as the 48th President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria. The colorful event was chaired by Chief Mrs. Nike Akonde, the President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, CIN, was established in 1959 and recognized by law in 1993 via Act No. 22. It has the statutory duty of determining the standards of knowledge and skills to be attained by persons seeking to become insurance professionals in Nigeria. The Institute of Affairs is directed by the Governing Council, chaired by a President and Chairman of the Council. The Institute recently installed its 48th President and Chairman of Council, Mrs. Fumi Babintin Ashaye, at a well-attended event at the Intercontinental Hotel Victoria Island. Welcoming guests to the investiture ceremony, the Chairman of the occasion, Chief Mrs. Nike Akonde, CONO, and stated that gender is no barrier to achieving success. I'm usually elated when I witness occasions like this. We are female professionals are elected to assume the role of leadership. It serves as a reference point for the youngest gener younger generation to believe in themselves and that gender is no barrier to being successful in all that we do. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Today, investiture of Mrs. Fumi Babinti Nashaye as the 48th president of the Chartered Institute and the sixth female president is the result of a long, enduring journey. Mrs. Babinti Nashaye started her insurance career with Royal Exchange Assurance PLC as insurance superintendent in 1987 and later joined Cornerstone Insurance PLC as a pioneer staff in 1991. She rose through the ranks to become the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the company. She joined the Governing Council of the CIN in 2006 and since then has served on various committees of the Institute. Delivering his keynote address on behalf of the Commissioner, the Deputy Commissioner Technical, Mr. O.S. Thomas said, that despite the rise in the numbers of qualified professionals from the Institute, very few are practicing professionally. 
the National Insurance Commission, took note of the number of qualified professionals, which I'm told have risen to 3,316. However, I think it's important for us to ask how many of these here certified and qualified members have continued to exhibit and sustain the spirit of the profession. How many of us conduct our businesses in line with the ethics, standards, and principles that guide the practice of an insurance professional? These are some concerns I felt we should try to address, especially as we usher in a new era and leadership in the Institute. With the speeches taken, friends and well wishes witnessed the investiture of Mrs. Fumi Babintin Ashaye as the 48th president and the sixth female to ascend this exalted office. In her acceptance speech, Mrs. Ashaye said that the trust of her tenure will focus on five points agenda, namely regular advocacy, members' professional development, enhanced insurance awareness, continued effort on the institute building in Victoria Island, and reorganization of the institute secretariat. In line with my thoughts and the committee's recommendations, the following programs will be the main trust of my presidency. Regular advocacy with government, members professional development, enhanced insurance awareness, continued effort on institute buildings, reorganization of our sectorians. The details of this five point agenda will be too voluminous and time consuming to be presented here. However, Permit me to present a summary of the action plan designed to attain the desired objectives. Regular advocacy. We will engage in regular advocacy and press releases on the role of insurance in the security of lives, property, and wealth creation. This will help to drive public awareness about insurance and help to rebuild the public confidence and trust in the profession and industry. Members professional development. The mandatory continued professional development MCD program of the institute will be reviewed to improve its offerings. This will be complemented with the regular publication of an insurance newsletter that will disseminate information on emerging development in the country and also in the industry. Also, the College of Insurance and Financial Management will be challenged to organize more relevant courses and programs for the benefit of all stakeholders. Ogun State, being the home state of Mrs. Ashaye, was not left out in the celebration of this laudable achievement of one of his illustrious daughters. In attendance were His Royal Highness Oba Dr. Adedotun Aremu Badebo, the Alake and Paramount ruler of Ekbalan, who was the guest of honor, and the Deputy Governor of Ogun State, Mrs. Yetunde Onanuga. In his goodwill message, His Royal Highness Dr. Badebo said that girl child education must be encouraged in Nigeria. I pray that this should affect all Nigerians. We should emphasize the education of our women folk. Our women should not be left to the kitchen and the other room. They should be everywhere where men are. So please, I want to thank you all for this honor you have done to her. This is the first time in the Institute's 58 years history that the woman is handing over the mantle of leadership as president to another woman. Mrs. Babintin Ashaye is a well-grounded, versatile and seasoned insurance professional. Many are of high hopes that Mrs. Ashaye Stenner, as the president and chairman of council of the institute, will open a new chapter in the history of the insurance industry in Nigeria.
that is our time on the program. Many thanks for being a part of it. You can join us again next week for yet another exciting package. But in the meantime, feel free to connect with us across all our social media platforms. You can also visit our website at www.almondfinancereports.com. Don't forget also that this program airs on BCOS Television Ibadan every Thursday by 6 p.m. My name is Margaret Miri Osiobor. Until next week, from all of us here, it's goodbye.